What's going on, you butt blasting behemoths? <laughs> Welcome to Grunt Speak, not so. Live from the lair! Toxic male Terrence Pop, welcome to the show. How you doing? We have another red suppository for you. <laughs> There we go. Right where the sun don't shine from our good friend Iron Riddle, who loves to send these things. Right. We usually get one or two a week, uh, but we save the best ones for you guys. Well, typically, the Red Pill Suppository is the worst way to get indoct into the Red Pill culture. Yeah. And most of the time, that happens in divorce court because it happened to me. Yeah. If you want to know where that Red Suppository rage comes from, and take a horse pill up your fourth point of contact. Yeah. yeah, and try to be happy about that. Oh, yeah, and unlike most suppositories, it does not absorb quickly. Mm -mm. That's why I do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the kind of person who's run out of feelings to hurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. Then we have the redonkulous swag for you. And we have multiple locations where you can get it. Go to the Stream Elements store or Crypto Fashion and embrace your inner fat punisher. Because after all, there's a little bad pop in all of us, even your mother. Shirts, stickers, mugs, and hats are on sale now. Your support helps keep us independent from big tech and keeps this life-saving train on the tracks. Links are in the meat gazer box. <laughs> this story is one of my RP rages and is nearly 35 years old. So when I was 17. You're learning young and that's a good thing. So he's like 52 now. Yeah. That's one of the reasons we like to share these stories is because the younger we can get this information to you guys, the better your life will be during your most formative and productive years. It'll be more productive because you're realizing your goddamn dick thinking <laughs> and literally you're taking your penis, injecting it into your own ass if exactly. you're playing around out there to knock up some of these whores. Don't make my mistake. Yeah. Don't walk up to the horror tree and shake it hoping a wife falls out because mm -hmm. the whore always falls out. I mean, come on. Dudes in their 20s especially haven't really learned their value yet and they're dumb enough to view women as the prize that by itself puts you in a subservient position to the almighty vagine absolutely correct and you know what that gets you nothing you get stepped on you get disrespected and you get friend zoned those are your three well, options you get to be a doormat but let's jump right in yeah. and see what's uh Shaken? <laughs> when I was 17, I was sitting in the break area at work with two of my female co-workers, both about my age. Mm. This can only end badly. <laughs> These two girls were raving about this hot guy that worked in the mall. His height, 5'11", his handsome face, his athletic build, his gorgeous hair, the way he dressed and wore his clothes, and ooh, I think he's a manager. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that uh, that extra $2 an hour is really going to pay dividends at Dairy Queen. Well, women, that's how they think. <laughs> Seriously. Yep, and some of them are dumb enough to let him shoot one right by the goalie, and then they become the Dairy Queen. Yep, they do. Right in the eye. On they went, spooling themselves into a swooning, lust-fueled frenzy over some guy they thought they both had a chance to get with. Nigga, please. If I was a five or a six, this guy was an easy nine. You could have taken his picture on an average day and put it on the cover of GQ or Men's Health. Okay. Both of these girls were about 5'3", mostly thin, with long brown hair, fives. So average. Just a Very little average. bit above average. Right at the top of that bell curve over the hump. Well, because they're young. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, in 14 years. They'll be, they'll be fours or threes. Yep. I said to both of them, <clears throat> sounds like you're talking about James. Girl one, wide-eyed with a grin. Oh, yeah, we are. Do you know him? I said, yeah, he's my friend. <laughs> Leaning in, girl two skeptically says, Oh, really? As if to say, how does a loser like you know him? Mm. <laughs> Anybody else been talked to by a woman in that particular way? Yeah, and we should probably do another video on what she says and what she what really she means. What she means, yeah. Chick speak. 
She clearly thought herself to have a higher SMV than me, and I didn't appreciate her doubting me and insinuating that I was lying. So my pride kicked in, uh. and I laid it all out there. And here we go. Yes, I do know him. He's 23. He has a bachelor's degree in electronics and a minor in photography from MIT. He's the assistant manager at the photo studio. The manager there is a total penny-pinching a-hole. James drives a 1975 Porsche 911, <coughs> and he has an apartment across the street from here and is originally from Duluth. I carried on a bit longer, first because of my in-your-face knowledge, and second because I was enjoying the female attention that I was getting. Mm. Well, you're 17, it's excusable. I gotcha, I gotcha. At 17, every kid is the sperminator. <laughs> <laughs> All it takes is a stiff breeze, if you know what I mean, yeah. and, and then you're returning the favor to said breeze. And you're walking around with a book cover in your Johnson. Have you seen my stapler? Would you touch my pee, pee No? You're going to walk away? I would set the building on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Every 17-year-old kid, when a hot chick walks by, becomes Milton. Yes. Unless they're like the high school jocks. I can't argue with that. The more I spoke, the more attention I got. And the closer they moved into me until they were almost sitting in my lap while they were asking me and I was answering their questions. Mm. Knowing female nature now, I feel shame that I even partook in these shenanigans. They, they were, were young. It, it, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. When you're 17 and a woman is actually hanging on your every word, you want to keep talking. Yes, you do. And then maybe she'll let you rub her back. You know, cause she, and then if, if she lets me rub her back, then maybe I can ask to rub the front and then it's on. Right? Right? Wrong. In today's day and age, you're going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> jail. They were swooning and batting their eyes and flipping their hair and turning flush. Little did I know that because I knew James, I was making Niagara Falls. Ooh. It was like I was a roadie for Van Halen and they were ready to blow me so they might get a chance to fuck David Lee Roth. <laughs> That's a very good analogy. Now, and that happens quite a bit. Yeah. Did I just date myself? How about Guns N' Roses? Shit, that's not much better. <laughs> <laughs> I do the jokes around here, Wayne. Anyway, girl one asks me, How do you know James? Well, I'm a photographer for my school yearbook and the newspaper, so I go to the photo studio and I buy all my supplies from him. Mm -hmm. Girl number two interrupts me with skeptics again. Well, just because you buy shit from him doesn't make you friends. Oh my gosh. <laughs> As she backed away from me a bit. So uh -huh. now I'm annoyed. <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> There's always that one. This chick, give her 30 pounds. There's your anchor right there. The one who has to constantly step in and dispel any attraction going on between her friend and whatever guy she wants to go home with. That's really a good observation, and you're probably correct on that. Take this girl to college, freshman 15, sophomore anchor. 60. Anchor. Well, as I was saying, because we're both into photography, we hang out and go on photo shoots together. You see what happens when you get the whole story? We go golfing, sometimes bowling, and he buys for me. Mm. Oh, so you guys are like really good friends? As girl two leans back towards me while grinding and squeezing her legs together. And you're getting uh, the cleavage action, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, just tell me more. What's it love at first sight? <laughs> Now I'm feeling dirty like I need a shower as I can feel her lust for status just dripping from both sets of lips. Well, yeah, we yeah. are. Now I'm pissed because she's flipping her interest. Uh -huh. Do you not be single? Says girl number one. With conviction? No, he's not. Nice. Wait, what? Smiles vanish, flirty voices gone, replaced with concern. Well, do you know who his girlfriend is? I'm still pissed. Yes, he's dating Kelly. That's, that's bad news, Bears. <laughs> Any woman named Kelly. Wow. Uh, a friend of mine from school. She's also a photographer. They've been dating for about a year. You bitch! I'll kill you! Sweet, sweet looks of lust and admiration turn to resting bitch face and eat shit and die of eating shit, along with the sounds of crumpling cellophane emanating from between their legs. <laughs> <laughs> they were looking at me like I just dropped a turd in the middle of the table and then puked on it. 
<laughs> You're taking our job, man. We're supposed to be cracking jokes here. This is hysterical. I do the jokes around here, Wayne. Both of them got as far away from me as they could without getting up from where we were sitting. Hmm. Then both of them began to tell me all about how James has a wandering eye and he'll never be faithful. Uh-huh. Women do this all, all the, time. the time. They're doing the last ditch Hail Mary effort to save their own egos. Yes. And they claim men are the ones who do this. No, no, no. This is not a man thing. This isn't even a woman thing. This is a people thing. Yeah, everyone does it. Let's pretend that's not true. Yeah. And when women want a high-value dude, they will make excuses as to why that dude would be happier with them. Therefore, they're totally justified in destroying his family, his uh-huh. livelihood, his job, anything and everything, because you can make him happy. And then you wind up with a bunny boiling on the stove. There you go. And now there's women out there, that would never happen. It happens all the time. Yep. You better have a camera on you, so when she cuts her throat, you can film the whole thing and prove it's not you. <laughs> no shit. That's a good turn. Oh, wow. Okay, we're about to go down a very dark path here. Uh, here we go. Here we go. You need to warn Kelly to leave him, girl one ordered me. What? Yeah, okay. You want this guy to tamper with his friend's relationship? No. Yeah, because that goes well between friends. Yeah, no. No. Mm. He will never be faithful, girl two warned me. He's going to cheat on her. It's only a matter of time. He looks at and catcalls all the women that walk by while he's working, and he catcalls and whistles at me whenever I walk by. He's a no good, dirty man that you want to bang. That's right. I see him talking to and flirting with lots of women all the time. Stalker much? <laughs> wow. It's, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty stalkerish. Just, just you, putting it you out You see there. how this instantaneously, all of a sudden he's a dirty, no good dude. You need to tell her to get away from him so we can swoop in. And I want to pretend that it's not true. And that's, this is actually fairly common. Yeah, and you know what would happen is eventually, if they were to get their wish, let's say this guy steps in, tells the guy, hey, look, you know, Kelly, blah, 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 you know, my friendship with him doesn't mean much, I care about you. Maybe he could break off a piece from the Kelly chick, you know, for being the nice guy who warns her about her boyfriend catcalling everybody, but what's going to happen with these two? They're going to try to swoop in, and then all of a sudden, the two who were in competition with the one, are now in competition with each other. Correct. And we're going to see who's really friends now, aren't we? Girl fight! I've seen this situation play out quite a few times with uh, the Rangerettes and the Battalion, and -hmm. they always turn on each other. Wow. Always. Of course. They want the rhino cock? They will definitely turn into hyenas and attack each other just to get a a shot at the rhino cock. Yep, and we all know the, the truth about hyenas. They're scavengers. Yes, they are. And they will turn on each other instantaneously at the first sign of opportunity. To get a good meal, they will. A meal of sausage. (laughs) Extra syrup. Hashtag fear the syrup. (laughs) Fear the syrup. I can't believe that that became such a thing for all the fans. We need to make that shirt. I think it's going to have to happen. It, it's that's one of them. I'm working on a comedy bit about failed seduction and pickup lines, and that's one of them. We should have like uh, Mrs. Butterworth's like tipped over on her side with like a pool of it, and then reflected in the pool. Hashtag fear the syrup. <laughs> It's amazing where these jokes come from. Like, it was just a cast-off line, and now, like, what, four months later, the the chat still every time, fear the syrup, fear the syrup. (laughs) You can never plan for a running gag, but you can run with a running gag. Yeah, yeah. Somehow it was my fault the hottest guy in the mall was dating my friend from school. I went from God status to whale shit in a split second. Yes. Their singing praise and worshipping songs for James turned into ridicule and slander because he's a no good peg. Because the, he broke their fantasy. Yeah, they can't have him. So now all of a sudden, he's not worth it. It's, it's called killing the messenger. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's no different than when one of the incels that these women hate and routinely ridicule on a regular basis asks a chick out, He's obviously into her. No, thanks. I'm not really into that. You fucking whore. Come on. It's pathetic no matter who's saying it. That's right, but I've seen that happen a couple times. As have I. That is never, that's a no uh uh-uh. 
and as a, a, a normal dude, you should be like, yo, yeah, you're out of bounds, man. Out of bounds, yeah. Listen, everyone gets rejected. Become friends with it. That's just the way the world yes. works. Yeah, as a dude, rejection should be your default setting. Mm-hmm. Rejection, all right, move on to the next. Rejection, all right, move on to the next. That's Sooner right. or later, you'll get a yes or a maybe. It's a, it's a numbers game. Yeah. You're yeah. playing the odds. It's like a casino. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you crap out. Sometimes you win the jackpot. Yes. I, I, well, once in a while, once somebody in a wins while the, jackpot. You get the jackpot. Most and of the time, it's like the machine you just left, you know, and you walk over to the one next to it, and all of a sudden it's jackpotting for the dude behind you. You're like, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of, a of times that jackpot's not worth the time or effort you put in to get it. So. Son of a bitch! I wish I had known at the time that this is normal female behavior competing for the highest status male, and they were trying to use me to speed his dating status to single so they could hopefully swoop in and date the, you know, no good, dirty, unfaithful, cheating man pig. Here, here's the sad part. There are men out there in the friend zone that will do this. Yep. What are you thinking? Yep. All right. Don't ever fall for this horse shit. You're in the friend zone. You are not going to get a piece of that action. And if you do, it might be a one or two time thing. She may or may not be drunk. You could wind up going to jail. It's not it's no worth good. it. That's the best way to get out of the friend zone. Help her get laid, you morons. Yeah. Listen, if you are, uh, <laughs> if you don't know you're in the friend zone and Woo. she comes up and asks you for advice on men, you're, you're in the friend zone. Yeah. Done and done. Oh. And not in the way you wanted. But we still have more of this to go, so let's jump back in. Watching these two women flip the switch more than once in this conversation had my blood boiling over. James and Kelly were my friends, and I care for both of them, and these two snot sleeves were insulting them and me. (laughs) Snot sleeve. Writing that down. (laughs) Yes. You made the book with that one. Yeah, that's beautiful. Disgusted with myself and the situation, I stood up and said, Neither one of you needs to worry about James. Kelly is 5'8", with long blonde hair, blue eyes, and wears a sea sling. She runs track cross country and is on the swim team with an amazing athletic body to match. James only dates tall, beautiful blondes. Both of you are way too short and have shit brown hair. Damn, man, that was harsh. Then I pointed at girl number two, and your tits are too small! Nice! You want to talk about just crushing them. And listen, he's just telling them the truth. Oh, it gets better. Girl number two. Oh, yeah? Then why is he always whistling at me? I snapped at her. He whistles at his dog, too. I said, date. He only dates tall blondes. He has been known once in a while to throw a dog a pity bone. (laughs) I was premature. I'm doing it again. <laughs> That'll write the pity bone. I like that. Oh, that's great. I walked away, leaving them sitting in their wet panties and sad misery. Girl two with her resting bitch face and girl one giving me the F me eyes. Two weeks later, I was working at a different job. Apparently, you should never make fun of your coworkers' tits, especially in front of customers. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it! <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Listen, those jobs aren't that relevant anyway. When you're 17, totally worth it. Move on. Yeah, yeah. At the mall where both James and Kelly worked, I would go to a pet store, which was 50 yards from the photo studio and 200 yards from the cafe where Kelly worked. Whenever I went to the pet store, I would always look for a particular worker. She was about my age, and I loved her company. It was Uh absolutely lovely to speak with her. She loved her job and was very knowledgeable about everything that was sold in the store. Somebody who actually takes their job seriously, that's a a good, it points to ethical character. Well, that's rare today, too. Yeah. She also aspired to have her own pet store someday. She would sing and dance while working, and butterflies and birds flew all around her with squirrels and chipmunks and other critters hopping around her feet. That sounds like that uh, Ace Ventura. Like Snow White or something. Yeah. Go out in the woods frolicking. Uh, God dang. Okay. (laughs) All right, this is your story. You you can write however you you want. You can do however you want, man. It's all good. I was telling Kelly about a conversation I had with the pet shop dame. Women weaken legs. We were all about the same age, and after finishing my story of admiration about Pet Shop Girl, Kelly said with a resting bitch face, What is it about her that men like anyway? Oh, God. Even, even a go. good one here. Even one, well, hot one anyway. I said, What do you mean? 
What's not to like? She said, well, lots of guys really like her, and her face is all fucked up. Kelly went on about Pet Shop Girl for quite some time, which didn't seem warranted to me. Mm. Pet Shop Girl was friendly, kind to everyone that she came in contact with. She always seemed to be friendly all the time. I didn't understand why Kelly was spewing venom at her. I said, well, I like her. Yeah. To which Kelly responded, no, you shouldn't have anything to do with her. She's dangerous, not a good person. I said, why? What did she do? Just trust me. Uh Uh-huh. Right. The, The just trust me. I got you. I never mentioned Pet Shop Girl in Kelly's presence again. At that time, I was 5'11", about 140 pounds. Pet Shop Girl was 5'6", 120 pounds, with gray eyes, curly, dirty blonde hair that went Mm. below her shoulders. She was thin, in shape, B-cup. She had been in a car accident when she was a toddler, which had caused the left side of her face to become slightly paralyzed due to some nerve damage, and a vertical scar split her upper lip, up and along the left side of her nose, just below the middle of her eye. But after knowing her for just a short time, I didn't even see the scar, nor the paralysis. And you want to know why that is? She had cool points. You will have inexplicable chemistry with a woman that you wouldn't be conventionally attracted to because of cool points and because of that strange chemistry. Yeah. It's happened to me. Yeah. Listen, if they're really feminine and they're friendly, that uh, goes a long way for a lot of guys. Yes, it does. Because we would much rather deal with feminine and friendly and sometimes overlook the fit if it means we don't have to deal with the shit. Or the feminist stuff. <laughs> yeah, don't want to deal with the feminist fuckery. Yeah. There are some feminists that are in shape, but it doesn't make them better people. How dare you? She had a smile that made the sun come up and the flowers bloom. I only saw a beautiful woman with a heart of gold, and I didn't think that I had a chance with her, but it didn't stop me from trying. Hmm. One day, James and I went to the pet store because I was telling him about her. He already knew who I was talking about, and he said, yeah, she is super nice, and he was going to try to help me get a date with her. She walked up to us and said, oh, wow, you two know each other. Hmm. James said, yeah, we've been friends for a few years. He's also friends with Kelly. He's the one that introduced us. Pet Shop Girl said, oh, wow, Kelly's the girl that works at the cafe. Oh, how cool is that? Kelly's so nice. I really like her. I have lunch at the cafe all the time, and we have nice talks. Hey, all four of us should go out sometime. No. (laughs) One of these ladies feels uber-threatened by the other. Yes. Uh, And you don't want to know why? Because no matter what that one woman does... She's never going to be able to put on enough makeup to overcome the cool points that the other girl has. Exactly. And looks fade. Uh Personalities change, but if you start out with a good one... More than likely, barring any horrible stuff that happens, you'll maintain it till you go to your 18th hole, which is your grave. Six feet deep. I was speechless. I felt like my face had just been pussy-graped by an unclean, unshaven 300-pound wamalo. Damn! Somebody was a lying quantaha, and I didn't know who. I didn't know nor understand female nature very well and how women compete for the highest status men. I'd known Kelly for years and didn't think she had any reason to lie about Pet Shop Girl being a horrible person, Mm. yet Pet Shop Girl was nice and friendly to everyone. Why would she lie about getting along with and being friends with Kelly? My 17-year-old brain shut down with that red pill so far up my ass I couldn't think. Or maybe I was finally thinking. Yeah. I didn't even know why at the time I felt completely betrayed. I walked out of the pet shop with bloody pussy juice dripping from my nose and chin, never to return. Oh, now there's an image, eh? Huh? <laughs> the viscous, backstabbing, cutthroat behavior of females in competition for the highest status men is absolutely freaking atrocious. It is. It is, but it, but you got to understand. Wow, they're programmed that way. It, it, it's not like they're being taught that. So these ladies come out of the box programmed to interrogate you for resources mm-hmm. and literally do whatever it takes to get to the top of the uh, dick pile. Yeah, they want to be the you know the alpha woman in the worm pile. This is where one of the divides between the sexes, because <clears throat> there's only two, really becomes apparent. Because for women, this is normal behavior. For men, this would be abnormal behavior. Yeah, men Most don't. men will see someone in a relationship and in their brain rewire it to maybe appreciate somebody's physical beauty, but we know a looky, no touchy. Yeah. Are there dudes out there who will, you know, Violate backstab that? their friends? Yeah, Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. of course. But they are the exception, not the rule. Well, Unfortunately, back in the day, that's crude. Today, I don't know if 
these uh, soy boys out there, I, I literally, I can't predict. Yeah, they're so thirsty. Because they have no masculinity. Possible. They don't understand the code. If they're trained to date by women, this is how they're going to behave. Mm-hmm. And so I'll, we're going to see more and more men like this, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, men in name only. Men, yeah, the, the men by default. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. Sometimes it's hard not to get mad and disgusted with the sexual marketplace. But if you're ignorant of the sexual marketplace and don't understand it, it will kill, destroy, and devour you. It is what it is. Or, or maim you as well. Yeah. There's a lot of guys that just get savaged and they... They never ever re-enter the uh, dating market. They learn their lesson early, they go monk. and they're gone. And we got a lot of monks who watch this show, and I don't judge them. Just like I don't judge guys who are married who watch this show. No, neither nor do I. I'm just different strokes. Yeah, we're, I'm literally shining the light of truth on men and women, and how dysfunctional we are today in this world. Yeah, I mean this is insane. I, I'm sure similar things happened back in the day. Because women, this is one of their natural, instinctive uh, ways. Yeah. But it seems to be much worse today. It's far, far worse. And I think part of that is social media. And part of it is just the complete and utter lack of consequences for acting this way. Well, that and literally every woman who has one of these gets on the dating apps, has a chance to talk to the the top 10%, the top 5%. Yep. And they literally, in their mind, they're like, oh, I can get that guy. Yeah. And because dudes will toss a bone to a five. Every once in a while. As long as she's got some cool points or if it's just been a while and he feels like it, let's be honest. And he's a slump buster. I understand. You give these women a false sense of their own value. Uh Uh-huh. And they take that and they run with it to the finish line. And we all know exactly where that finish line is. Yep. Stop. Don't touch me there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It is what it is. There's more. Today, looking back, I believe that Kelly saw Pet Shop Girl as a threat to her relationship with James mm. and was trying to get me to play Interception and or I was Kelly's backup plan and was keeping me from getting with Pet Shop Girl and or Kelly just didn't want to lose the free attention she was getting from me, which could be lost if I had a girlfriend. And or Pet Shop Girl wasn't interested in me but wanted to use me to get with James. Honestly, bro, it could be any of the above. It could be any of that stuff. I'm beginning to think that she was threatened because the other girl didn't have the looks but was still very attractive. Mm -hmm. That's very hard to compete against. Yeah. How women talk to and react to men that they are attracted to is not how they talk and react to their frenemies yeah Yeah, if you want to know what kind of a woman a person really is you just listen to how they talk about people who aren't around that's some cold shit girl number one and girl number two both were trying to use me to get to james and were willing to do nefarious things to make that happen yep after i stood up for kelly james and myself girl one was attracted to my sudden alpha behavior pick one pick all or any combination of these reasons also, please list any other reasons for red pill truths going on in this story. Amen. Guy's like making his own YouTube video here. Make sure you put your stuff in the comments. He's basically telling you to put it in the comments. So, like, like I said, I feel done. like my jokes are being stolen by this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Riddle, you need your own show, man. This is good stuff. It is. It is. Kelly and James got married in 1992. Okay. Have four grown children and are still happily married. But good for them. Both Kelly and James have hit the wall at the speed of sound. (laughs) James a bit harder, no more GQ pictures for him. Mm. I've rarely spoken with Kelly since that day. James and I are still good friends. I couldn't answer Kelly's question back then. What is it about her that men like anyway? Mm. I now know why I found Pet Shop Girl so attractive, as well as many other men liked her, Uh and why other women I knew seemed to hate her. She had the Fs. Yeah! (laughs) Fun, friendly, flirty, faithful, fertile. And it's easier for women to sabotage good women than to become better themselves. Oh, my God. Wow. That put a button on it perfectly. Yes. Wow. 
Because that's exactly what we saw throughout this entire story. They rip Women down. willing to throw each other to the wolves to get a crack at the dude who's already spoken for. Yep. Amazing. Holy and yeah, that, that whole third wheel thing. Like, because in high school, my girlfriend lived in a different city. It was about a half hour drive out there. But my good buddy, he had a girlfriend. And because, you know, it was like a half hour drive out there, couldn't see her all the time, I would hang out with the two of them. I was the third wheel, but they didn't treat me as such. Sooner or later, though, it became obvious that the girl in the equation loved the attention she was getting from both sides Uh. and eventually tried to play the two against the middle, which wound up in me not talking to that gentleman for a few years. Uh, Yeah, again, we fall back on the drama pill. Yep. And obviously, I wasn't interested. I had a much better looking woman. Ouch. Especially if it's your good friend, it's always looky no touchy. Bros before hoes, man. That, exactly. That You need to live by that. Everybody should. Unfortunately, because so many men now are raised by women, fewer and fewer of them are abiding by the rule. But, hey, I don't want this to be the last story we ever get. So yep. send in your stories, bitches. Yeah. And we'll do, if they're good enough, we'll do a show on it. Or yeah. we'll read them on the, during the podcast. I guarantee you that dudes watching this video and listening to the story, just as we were, are going to be reminded of something that happened to them when they were younger, and it's going to help them approach that scenario with a whole new perspective and give them some wisdom. And we can all benefit <laughs> from a little bit of wisdom from someone else's experience. Yeah, listen, uh, I've been through the meat grinder, and I have no problem telling the stories about what happened so it doesn't happen to you. Because, let's be honest, about half of this show is just our own past stupidity being brought up and rubbing it in our own faces for your comedic benefit. <laughs> uh, it's actually, it's, it's mentally healthy to realize yep. how you were and then laugh at it and use those experiences to better your now. When you look back, you realize how far you've come. Yep. You got to write that down. All over her face, neck, back, and thighs. <laughs> 